And so with podcasting, you know, this, the desire of someone is always to be able to reach someone with their message. And I think, you know, as business owners, online business owners, particularly, our core desire is to help. All right, Courtney, I am so excited to chat with you. I know you and I were just chit-chatting about how we've kind of been in the same circles for years. I've seen your name floating around, but we've never actually officially met. So I know it's so exciting to be here. I feel like this online business space is so big yet so small at the same time. It really is. Yes. And it's amazing when you see these people online and you see their name and then you actually like meet face to face. It's just, there's this, I don't know what, I don't even know really how to describe it, but there's something so beautiful about connecting And I know this last year with COVID, things have totally changed in that sense too. But just to be able to connect with people all around the world, doing amazingly different things, just see what's going on in their world. And just like, it's opened up so much possibility for people, I think. Oh, I agree. And I feel like having an online business has given me so many opportunities to meet people, to connect Mm -hmm. opportunities, to grow my business in ways that would have never been possible had it not been an online business business. It's just made the world a very small place. Yes. Yes, for sure. So for sure. Okay. Before we dive in talking all about like podcasting, cause I know that's your zone and I love my podcast, right? We I've had my podcast for a couple of years now. And I remember somebody telling me to like minimize what I was doing in my work. And they're like, what about the podcast? I'm like, I'll never get rid of my podcast. <laughs> I love being here with the podcast, but before we do all of that, Tell us a little bit about you. Yes. So I am Courtney Elmer. As you guys know, I am the founder of The Effortless Life. And we are a company that is dedicated to helping online business leaders get the right support and structure in place in their business so that they can scale to the level that they want to scale. For some people, that's that six figure mark. For some Mm -hmm. people, it's multiple six figures. For some people, it's like seven figures and beyond, but helping you design a business that works for you. And when we say effortless, we really mean that with less effort, with less of your energy. I tell people, I'm like, we're the anti-hustlers. Like if Gary Vee is on one end of the spectrum over here, like we're all the way on the other end of the spectrum over here. That's like the path to success is not paved with hard work and hustle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. And really it boils down to how are you putting the right support and structure in place within your business so that you can actually bring your vision to life. So that's what we help leaders do. Yeah. I think, uh, so our mutual mentor, James Wedmar, he had just posted or he shared in one of our coaching calls, something about your effort is not determined by, or your value is not determined by your effort. And I know you and I both kind of fall in that same vein. And that's probably why we have James as a mentor is because he's in that same vein too. So what I mean, what got you to this place? Like where, how has that journey, that progression been from dream to fruition to actually what you do today? Yeah. You know, it's such an interesting journey as I know so many people listening, it's kind of like, if you looked back and you're like, gosh, where I was five years ago, 10 years ago, like I would have never seen myself where I am today. It was that totally that kind of a journey. And if I were to take you 10 years back, I was sitting in the doctor's office. This was for a follow-up visit a couple of days after I had gotten home from my honeymoon. And I had just been diagnosed with cancer. I was 25. And I remember this like it was yesterday. You know, it was that thing out of left field that you never saw coming. Mm -hmm. And it was the wake-up call that I needed to help me realize that the path I was on was not serving me. And that path looked like working every night, working all weekends, working around the clock. I was working for other business owners at the time as their operations manager, doing the same thing, helping them get systems and support and structure in place within their business Mm -hmm. so that they could really spend that time in their zone of genius. But I was doing it at my own expense. And I realized that there were a lot of things that I needed to change and that there was a lot of work that was ahead of me, not so much in terms of building a business, but in terms of who I was, Mm -hmm. how I was showing up in the world, how I was living in accordance with my values, or at that point, not living in accordance with them, really getting clear on what that even was and how to design my life around that. Mm -hmm. And so going through treatment and recovery really gave me the time that I would have never, ever, ever, ever taken on my own to consider all of those things and to really 
restructure my own life. The irony, right? Like the girl with all the systems and the structure, like needed to really do a hack job on her own life. And that was just the place I found myself in. And from there started my business. Once I had really come out on the other side of that and learned so much about myself and learned Mm -hmm. so much about the gifts and talents that I was wasting, Mm -hmm. the things in my life that I always said I wanted to be doing, the people I said I wanted to be helping, but that I really was just going through the motions, not doing anything with. So in reorganizing my own life from the inside out, I was then able to launch my practice and start coaching others to do the same. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, even though the systems and the structure that we help install into people's businesses is tangible, it's like, okay, set this up, do this step one, step two, how are we bring this vision to life? What goals do we need to focus on this quarter? It's all of that. And it's also the internal structure. Mm -hmm. It's the internal systems, right? I'm putting that in air quotes, but like, how are you living your life. And how does that translate into this greater vision that you want to build? So it's all of that. And that's really the nutshell version of why I do what I do and how I got into that. Yeah. Well, and it's so fascinating because I don't, I don't think we've talked about this, but like my journey started with my husband having a brain tumor. Mm. And so going through that same sort of experience of reevaluating, what do you really want your life to look like? Right. That idea of FOMO, right. Or not FOMO, YOLO, YOLO, that's the one, not FOMO. (laughs) But YOLO, like you only live once. So what are you doing with this one life that you have? And are you really living it in a way that that is honoring who you are, what you want to create and how you want to live and all of those things and those pieces a part of you? And I think, I mean, you would probably say the same thing, that business is one of the most refining and growing things. Like I, if my business fell apart tomorrow and I walked away and didn't all of the investment, all of the time, the money, the energy, everything would be totally worth it because because who I am today and what I've learned about myself is so different than who I was five years ago. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. It's amazing the change that's happened. A hundred percent. Oh, I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. Yeah. And looking back, I would have never had the opportunities to grow in the way that I've been able to grow Mm -hmm. without my business. Like it Mm -hmm. was a very key piece of that. Had I just stayed working traditional nine to five, working for other people, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But for me, I knew that I was called to more. That wasn't my path. And had I stayed on that path, I would have been limiting myself in so many ways, ways that I couldn't have even fathomed Uh that I would have been limiting myself. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I just, love watching the evolution of people in their businesses and how things like this, I don't know, the possibility, the dreams, like the reality of it, it just, it it warms my heart, right? (laughs) Like I'm like all giddy right now. I don't even know what to talk about next. No. Um, But I know podcasting was what we were going to talk about. And podcasting is one of those big structures, those big tools that you have found to leverage, not only just in your business, but in other people's business. And I know that podcasting is such a, a wide world. So tell us a little bit about why podcasting, why is a podcast and in that world of doing a podcast, right? Right. Cause there's a lot of just random podcasts out there. How can you really leverage a podcast to create that effortless life, right? To create that business that fulfills your dreams. It's not you hustling all night long, every night, every day. Yes. Oh, I love this question. And you know, it's so funny too, because I never, ever, 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 ever in a million years saw myself teaching podcasting. <laughs> like that was <laughs> not part of my vision setting out. It was like, you're going to become this company that is a household name. That is like the Oprah, you know, but known for like helping people create an effortless life. And what does that mean? And all that podcasting was like, not even a part of it, but in the very early days of my business, my son was about Gosh, 18 months old or so at the time. And he was home with me full time. And some days, like quite honestly, it was like, okay, we are going to go just strap you in the stroller and we're going to go for a walk because mommy needs some hands free time. You know, and it was just literally like in that season of my life. And I was growing my business alongside learning how to be a mom, you know, first time mom. And there was a lot of self growth that had to happen in that season as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that I was learning, because it was one of the only ways that I could learn because my time was so limited. I couldn't sit there and just watch modules of someone's program on hours on end. Like I used to be able to do is I would listen to podcasts Mm -hmm. and I would plug my AirPods in. We would go for walks. We walk for miles and I would just listen and binge, listen and listen and listen and listen. And I learned a lot. And one day it just dawned on me because I had been so frustrated 
with the social media scene. Mm -hmm. I've been doing all the things that I felt I was supposed to be doing, that I was told that I should be doing in order to grow my business, to get leads, to bring in sales and revenue more consistently. That was a huge pain point for me was that I would get some leads and I would get some sales, but it wasn't consistent. Yeah. It wasn't, I could expect this amount every month and build from there. It was not that at all. It was like, I don't know whatever, what's going to happen this month in my business. Like it was very like up and down. And so listening to these podcasts got me thinking, gosh, if if these people could have a show, share their knowledge with me, and I'm sitting here in their audience, just absorbing all that they have learned through the years, which is helping me shorten my learning curve. Mm -hmm. Certainly the things that I have learned along the way could help someone else. And what if instead of being in the audience, listening to these experts share from their stage, essentially every week, what if I could build my own stage mm -hmm. and create my own podcast with my own audience to reach people in that way? And one of my deepest values is connection. Like sitting here talking with you, like we're doing right now lights me up. This will feed and fill me for days. And I was craving that connection in my business. I had it with my clients and with my students when I was working with them and coaching them. But in terms of building a community outside of that, I wanted mm -hmm. to feel that connection with my community too. And I thought, gosh, what if a podcast could really help me do that? Mm -hmm. And of course, being the strategic systems thinker that I am, I'm like, but I'm not going to just do it if it's not going to give me a return, if it's not going to be worth my time, if it's not going to be worth the investment and the energy and the effort that I would have to put into it up front. And because I didn't know a lot about podcasting then, I was like, oh, I just don't know. It feels like a lot of work mm -hmm. and it feels like more than I have to give. So I just sat on the idea and then fast forward a couple of years. I flew out to California and it was actually for a James Wedmore event. And I had to receive an award at that event. So I had to be there and all this. And it was great. And they had this panel with these podcasters who were just sharing about having a podcast and using that for business. And I'm like, I'm going to that panel. Like, I feel like I I'm think meant I was in the same panel you there? or I was there. Uh, I wasn't yes. on the panel. Yeah. Right. I was like, I'm meant to be in that audience. Let me go listen. And there was a guy on the panel. His name was Preston. I'll never forget this. And he came up to me after and he's like, gosh, I heard your story. Congrats on the award. You know, we just struck up a conversation. And he told me the story of how he had gone from being on food stamps to launching his business and then simultaneously launching a podcast, growing that podcast, and then as a result, growing his business to the multiple six-figure mark. And he was like, if you want to hop on a call after this event, you know, we'll just chat on Zoom, like happy to share, you know, some tips about podcasting with you. And I, I was like, um, yes. And after that <laughs> event, I was like, when can we meet? Are you free this date? Like this time I'm available here. So no, we finally got on this call. And I remember for 90 minutes, just sitting there, like taking notes, hopefully like absorbing everything else through osmosis. Like he was sharing so much information with me, but what he shared with me wasn't necessarily earth shattering. It wasn't like secrets, like podcasting secrets or anything like that. It was just Courtney, a podcast can be a fantastic tool to grow your business. And he yeah. gave me the confidence to take the next step, which was to actually launch a show of my own mm -hmm. and to see how I could leverage that for myself. So when we launched, we launched our show, we shot to the top of the charts. We got over 65 star reviews within like the first week. I mean, this is unheard of in the podcasting space. Yeah. And I was quite surprised because I didn't really know what to expect. And so colleagues of mine started reaching out like, Courtney, what are you doing with your podcast? Like I'm about to launch. Like, how did you do that? So I'd walk them through the steps of what I did and they did it. And then they would get better results than I did. You know, more reviews, mm -hmm. more downloads. One person came back and he was like, Courtney, it, we had our best month in sales ever. And I know it was because of this launch. Like I cannot yeah. thank you enough. So I'm like, okay, I'm really on to something here. And from there, my podcasting program was born where now what we do is we teach business owners how to leverage a podcast for their business. Not to just start a podcast, yeah. not to just create one. Yes, to get your message out, but how to actually use it as you said, as a tool to drive traffic and sales to your business, because mm -hmm. I am all about that effortless life. And I believe that the time that you are putting into whatever you're doing in your business, especially in terms of your marketing should be yielding you some kind of return. Mm -hmm. And so I always challenge people. I'm like, look at what you're doing right now in terms of your marketing. Is it actually working for you? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like you are just trying to, you know, essentially punch a clock, hopefully getting something out on the other end or putting what a better metaphor might be like, you know, putting coins in the slot, like hoping for a win, but that nothing's yeah. coming out, you know, and it's not actually working. Yeah. And then is that an actual best use of your time? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no. And I think it's so valuable to you to kind of look at that, like, where are you putting in your time and is it really worth it? And I know for me, that was one of the big things. Like I started my podcast, I don't know, like three years ago, maybe. And for a long time, the reason and the motivation behind starting it was because I held a summit and I loved connecting. Like you said, the, the connection, I loved meeting other people. I loved the conversations. I loved learning from other people and then being able to share that learning. And I wanted to be able to facilitate that going forward. So that was my motivation, my effort or my reason for starting my podcast in the first place. And that's what I did for a very long time. It was predominantly guest episodes where I just talked to other people and shared those talks with other people listening. And over the years, I was like, gosh, this is, I love what I'm doing. I love the connection, but it really isn't growing or it's really not investing and having that ROI on my business that I really want because all I'm doing is showcasing and staging so many other people and I'm not really using it very strategically. And so in the last six months, I've kind of made that shift and transition to making my podcast the predominant source of content and information that I I put out and then everything else trickles around that. And so really setting that podcast up as like the center of my business and really noticed a huge shift in doing that. And so I know a lot of podcasters don't keep with it, right? Like a lot of podcasters, like I did just because I enjoyed it and it was fun and whatever, but I really wasn't seeing that ROI. So, and I know that a lot of people will get all gung-ho and all excited about starting a podcast and not see that ROI and not see that return and then eventually give up. And I think you even had said like after episode six, right? Like they only make it six episodes in and then they're like, eh, I'm done. So what is that reason? Like why are so many podcasters like excited and gung ho, but just not that long-term yeah. investment in it? I'm so glad you brought this up because it is so true and it breaks my heart because what I see happening, just like you said, is that people get excited. <laughs> they think, okay, I'm going to hit publish. If I could just get my episode out there, then mm-hmm. it'll just pick up momentum. I'll find people. I'll be like one of these people that just hit publish. And next thing you know, they've got 250 downloads a month, you know, I mean, 250,000 downloads a month, like this amazing thing. And unfortunately, the reality is just like any other platform out there, you are not going to hit a home run with your first Instagram reel. Mm-hmm. You're not going to hit a home run with your first lead magnet you know, that you put out there. I look back yeah. at some of my old lead magazines. I'm like, oh my gosh, like what I the hear you. was that? The same with like stories or anything. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like, did I really post that? <laughs> right. I know, I know. And so with podcasting, you know, this, the desire of someone is always to be able to reach someone with their message. And I think, mm. you know, as business owners, online business owners, particularly our core desire is to help. Like uh, we wouldn't be in business otherwise, you know, like I wouldn't be in business if my, if at least a part of me did not want to help somebody, you know? And so mm-hmm. that's a lot of people's motivation for getting into podcasting. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when they don't know how to leverage their content to create that deeper connection with their listener, to invite their listener to take specific action steps with them so that they bring them into their community versus just passively listening to them every Mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. When they don't launch that show, then they're not going to get the traction and the momentum that they're hoping for from the get-go. Mm-hmm. And like you said, with your show, it was a lot of fun, but because you weren't really using it strategically, it wasn't really feeding your business in mm-hmm. terms of ROI. Mm-hmm. And so this is unfortunately what we see happening. And that's why so many people quit after episode six. That's the statistic, which is alarming to me because what happens is they conclude or they mistakenly make it mean that it's about them. It's their message. It's something they said. People just don't like them. You know, I don't have what it takes because all these other people are doing it so much better than me. And that is a huge blow, of course, to the ego, but also just to your Mm self-esteem and to your vision and your picture, your mental picture of yourself, your self-perception. When really it's not about them at all. It's not about their message. It's not that their message was bad or that it had been said a million times or that nobody wanted to listen. It was just that they didn't position them themselves properly. Mm-hmm. They likely didn't launch their show, which is different for you listening. It's different than hitting publish, right? Like hitting publish is totally different than launching a show. And because of that, they didn't get the eyeballs on their show from the beginning that they needed in order to gain long-term traction, to really mm-hmm. know how to bring those listeners ch- ch- and convert them from listener into customer or into yeah 
part of their community. Yeah. And I think that that is so true, right? The it's like, oh, I'm just going to do it on the back end. I'm just going to sneak it out there and put it out there. And then it doesn't build that traction, right? That doesn't, it doesn't get that momentum from the very get go. And then it just kind of fizzles out versus making it a huge hoopla and splash when you come out is a huge difference in how sometimes I think just that confidence to do that in the beginning is one of the big, biggest hurdles for actually maintaining it and keeping it going and like seeing the success with it you want it to have. Yeah. Oh, and I just wrote that down because that is actually the thing about sneaking it out there, you know, and I think so many people have this perception that it will, if I just put it out there and if people listen, Mm -hmm. then that will validate what I'm doing. And then I will get the confidence that I need knowing that people are interested. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, you have to flip that around because When you create your show, you put all this heart and soul and love into it. Also time, effort, and energy. You know, it takes a lot to record episodes, get them up there. You get that, you hit publish, you hope people will listen. What you're doing is you're giving your power away to other people who may or may not have an interest or who may or may not even just have an understanding of how important this is to you. Mm -hmm. So they won't know to support you in it, you know? And Mm -hmm. so it's, it's really those one in a million unicorns that you hear these stories and people like I hit publish and I all of a sudden I had like a million downloads and my podcast has been doing great ever since. Like that's not the reality for most people. If it was, everybody would have a podcast. Everybody would be doing a podcast and everybody would have millions of downloads. And so you have to flip that around and essentially reverse engineer that you You bring the confidence to the table. You help other people get excited about what you're doing with the show. You help them get invested in the behind the scenes of you actually creating and bringing this thing to life. And they will support you because they feel like they are a part of it. But because you have brought that confidence to the table from the get-go to begin with, as opposed to waiting for someone else to give you that confidence. Yeah. Okay. I love this. And I know we've talked a lot about like how a podcast, what a podcast can do for you, right? In your business. What else, like why else does somebody listening, like sitting there, like, I'm not really even sure I have something to talk about. I don't even really sure if this is something I should do. Like, what would you say to that person that's sitting there like questioning whether or not a podcast is really meant for them and what that could actually do for them? Yeah. Mm, Such a great question, because this is a big question that a lot of people ask themselves, you know, they're Mm -hmm. like, is it going to be worth my time? And would I have enough things to say? And what if I run out of things to talk about? Mm -hmm. Will people actually even listen? And the number one thing I always say is it's not as much about whether or not people will listen as it is about knowing how to create a show worth listening to. Mm -hmm. And a podcast can be such a valuable tool for your business. Like we've talked about, it can definitely drive leads. It can definitely drive traffic when you know how to set it up correctly and strategically. And it can also collapse the amount of time that it would normally take someone to make a purchasing decision with you, Mm -hmm. you know, versus finding you cold on social media, for example, Mm -hmm. or through a Facebook ad, but how to know whether or not it's right for you. And this is a question that I always ask those that are considering a podcast and kind of flip that question around and say, well, take a look at your marketing right now. What do you enjoy about it? What are the parts of it that you hate that you wish you've never had to film another Instagram reel for the rest of your life? You know, would that just like put you on cloud nine, right? Some people love it, but other people are like, oh, why do I have to do this? So look at the aspects of marketing that you enjoy. Look at the ones that are really draining you. Mm -hmm. Look at where your time is going right now in terms of your marketing and the return that you're getting on it. Are you getting an ROI? Yeah. You know, I've had so many people that I've coached through my mastermind that they're like, social media is doing nothing for me. I'm like, well, then why are you still posting on social media? Yeah. You know, but we often do things because we think we should, we think we have to. And with a podcast, if you are someone who likes to have very simple processes within your business, if you like to have very streamlined ways of doing things where you're just creating one piece of content that can then be utilized and repurposed and leveraged and repurposed again and shared Mm -hmm. out and recycled and utilizing your time in the best way when it comes to your marketing, then you absolutely should consider a podcast. Mm -hmm. The question that a lot of people raise within their mind, you know, when considering it is it's like, I don't know, can I really add anything else to my plate? I'm Mm -hmm. I'm tapped right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not really about adding anything else to your plate. It's about replacing what's not working Mm -hmm. that you've been spending your time on 
with something far more effective. And so this is essentially where, you know, unlike other podcast programs where people are just showing you like, here's how to come up with a podcast name and here's like how to, some tips on cover art and here's how you hit publish. Mm-hmm. We really bring that strategy piece to the table from a business perspective. Cause I'm not about to teach you how to do anything if it's only going to add more work and add more effort. Like, yeah. you know, that would go against who I am and who we are as a company and everything that we value. And so what we essentially help our students do is install a marketing system via a podcast that replaces all the other scattered marketing elements that have just not gelled within mm-hmm. their business that just haven't been working for them. And in doing that, and you, you mentioned this earlier, how you've had this realization with your own podcast, that it is now like the central part mm-hmm. of your marketing. It's the piece that everything else comes from. Yeah. And that's what it is for me as well. You know, I can sit down and record a podcast episode and our team will go in and they will take all the little nuggets from that episode. They turn it into social media content. It goes out on my stories. It's being shared in our weekly emails. You know, they're repurposing that episode in other ways as well. And it is just an endless source of content, not only for all of our other channels, but it's also, this is something I often say as well when thinking of a podcast is how much leverage you can actually create. Mm -hmm. because unlike social media, where you post something and 24 hours later, people have already forgotten about it (laughs) with a podcast. I mean, have you ever found a podcast that you really love? And when you do, you're like, I'm going back to episode one and I'm just going to listen. You know, I just want to listen to everything this person has to offer. Doesn't matter if that episode is three years old, people do that. That is what people do with podcasts. So when you think of your time, and the value of your time. And if you can put one hour into creating an episode once a week that replaces the need for all the rest of the content in your business, you're no Mm -hmm. longer having to create all of that yourself. Even if you don't have a team, it becomes much easier to pull that content from. Mm -hmm. And that that one piece of content is evergreen. Mm -hmm. That you might post it tomorrow, but three years from now, someone might go back and find you and really resonate with that and reach out to you to work with you because of it. Yeah. You know, you could spend an hour doing that or... You can spend an hour coming up with seven Instagram posts for the week, scheduling them all out and just hoping to get some traction from, Yeah, you know, and so I'm not saying don't do Instagram, you know, obviously if you love Instagram and it's, you can have a presence on social media. I'm not saying you don't need to have a presence, but I'm just saying from a perspective of being the CEO of your business and where Mm -hmm. you're investing your time, would you rather be investing it in something that's essentially a liability where like on social media, you're pouring in, but not getting anything back. Or would you rather be investing it into an asset that you're creating that will pay you dividends in terms of leads and sales for years to come? Mm -hmm. And that was a huge perspective shift for me. Yeah. And so when I share that for those that are really like, okay, yeah, I don't know if I could add anything to my plate. I don't know if a podcast is right for me. And those are the things that I would invite you to consider because again, growing a business is hard enough. We don't need to make it harder on ourselves Mm -hmm. by just willy nilly doing all of these things that aren't actually yielding a return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much so. And even like when you look at content creation and social media strategy and things like that, there's so, I have been guilty in the past of downloading somebody's like 31 days of social media content. Right. And it's, but it's all really random. It's all like it just, and then it feels like 31 pieces of content, right? You're coming up with 31 things. And when I started switching gears in my podcast and really looking at, I was like, okay, what is this next quarter look like? I have 12 episodes, like 12 for the entire quarter or however many weeks it really comes out to be right. But like 12 episodes and then each month is four. And then when I take those four, so it basically takes, like, if you looked at that same quarter and said 90 days worth of content to come up with, that seems like a lot, (laughs) but then you look at, okay, well, it's only 12 episodes. It just lightens. I mean, just that frame of mind, it lightens the content production so much so. And it is definitely changed the game. Like now I know like every email is geared towards that podcast for the week or this whole week I create, you know, like you said, my person creates like a quote post and she creates a reel and she creates one other thing for the episode alone. And then it leaves me just filling in the gaps of the fun stuff every so often. So it really lightens even just that creation, that content creation, which I know is so overwhelming for a lot of people of like, what do I post today? What do I come up with today? It takes that whole load off just looking at, okay, look at the next 12 weeks and you have your whole quarter done in one day. 
Yes. And for those listening that are mm-hmm. still like, yeah, but I still don't know if I would have enough to talk about on my show. Or I still like, what if I run out of things to talk about? We run into this all the time. In fact, I was on a call with someone right before this. She was like, I don't think I would have enough content that people would want to hear. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, I hear you. And I've been there. And I had that same concern. It was like, what if I reach episode 28? And I'm like, okay, guys, I don't know what else to talk about. We're going to start back what I was talking about in episode one and, you know, like recycle this content. But the truth is you can go so deep on a topic. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we teach content creation from a podcast perspective is your podcast operates like an umbrella. It is the theme of your content. It should echo the theme of your brand, whatever your brand is about, who you are, what you stand for. Underneath that umbrella, there are a variety of topics that you can essentially talk about always pointing back to that theme. So to give you an example, our podcast is Systems Made Simple. We talk about systems, but within those systems, there's four systems that every business owner needs. And within those four systems, there's hundreds of little systems that you Mm -hmm. can install within your business. And so breaking it out that way, and there's a formula that I teach that really helps you to visualize this, especially if you're a visual person. And to get all of these ideas that you don't even, might not even realize are in your head, but to get them out on paper. And then, like you said, you know, you do that, you sit down for 20 minutes and you do this brainstorming exercise and you realize that you actually just came up with a hundred different things you could talk about, but that you only need 12 for the next quarter. And it's like, okay, well now how do I pick which 12 I'm going to talk about? Cause I've got so many great ideas. I've seen this happen time and time again. We had a student just post in our group this morning. I need to go back and respond to her. And she was like, I have so many ideas now. Like, first I thought I I didn't have any. And now I have like hundreds and now I'm like, where do I start? You know, and how do we narrow this in? And so, you know, that is really the beauty of podcasting is that it's such a wide open platform. There's a lot of money being poured into the podcasting space right now. Like it's projected to grow by about 27 and a half percent over the next few years. And I saw this statistic the other day that said there are more Americans now that listen to podcasts than have Netflix accounts. Mm. And I was like, whoa, Okay. So I've been telling people like, wouldn't you want to be on the front end of that growth curve? I don't know about you, but I would. And it's unlike TikTok trends and things that are kind of like fly by night. Podcasting is here to stay. It's been around since 2004. It's not Mm -hmm. going anywhere. If anything, it's only going to get more prolific. You're going to see more podcasters enter this space. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the only places where you can share thoughts and opinions and not be censored to not worry about how you're saying what you're saying or what you're putting out there. So if you have a burning message on your heart, that is just, you know, you've been maybe sharing it a little bit on social media, but it's just not resonating like you want it to, you know, a podcast is really a place where you can go deep with your audience Mm -hmm. and really dive into those topics that are on your heart to talk about and to explore. You'd be amazed how quick, I mean, how long have we been talking? It's probably over. Yeah. Yeah. 30 minutes at this point. Like it's like, yeah, it's amazing how quickly the time goes by. Yeah. When really talking about topics that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then even just the connections, right? Mm -hmm. Like my podcast, and I don't think we talked really much about that, but like how my business was built from the very beginning with these connections. And that was the main source of what I was doing that out of that, like even just so while I say like, oh, there wasn't a return on investment, there really was right. Like, because all of those people that I've connected with along the way have become either friends or collaborators, or I've been able to speak in their communities, or we've been able to do something together. There's, it was never like, oh, it just never had the return on investment. It was just maybe not the monetary direct way, but it, those relationships and that network and that connection in the community, even from a guest connection piece is huge. And I know we didn't even touch on that at all, <laughs> but yeah, I know that could be a whole nother episode because yeah. you're so right. Like the yeah. relationships and the connections you're able to make the doors that have opened for me because of my podcast would mm-hmm. have never opened had I not had a podcast. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Courtney, we could keep going forever and talking. And I know that, I mean, like I said, I love my podcast. So I love when other people start sharing their podcast and just getting that insight into their world, which is the other big thing about podcasting is like people get to know you on a very personal level in a lot of ways. And that makes them know, like, and trust you and want to be a part of your community even more. But 
how can people, I, I like lost my train of thought where I was going there, <laughs> but anyway, I know you have a lot of fun, exciting things coming up in terms of how to get started with a podcast. If somebody's sitting there and I know we've talked a lot about like why a podcast is so valuable for so many people. So if somebody's like, Courtney, I buy it. I believe everything you've said and I want to start my podcast now. How can they get in touch with you? Where can they follow? What can they do right now? Yes. Yeah, so I would invite you to go to the effortless life co slash rising moms. And when you do that and you enter your info there, I will send you a guide that I've created called the five things you need to know before launching a podcast. And what this guide has been designed to do is really go through the top five misconceptions about podcasting time and content being two of the big ones mm -hmm. and really help you start to unpack whether or not a podcast is a next right move for your business. And to give you that clarity on that, there's a couple of exercises there that you'll be able to do and just kind of working through to see very quickly in less than 10 minutes if you should pursue a podcast. So I'd say that'd be a great place to start. And then from awesome. there, I would love to connect with you. Like I am all about that connection. If I had to pick a top core value, it's connection. Like I have probably four or five core values, but it's like connection is always, always, always. So please come find me on Instagram. I'm at the Courtney Elmer. And of course, if you want to learn more about what we do at The Effortless Life, you can just go to our website as well, theeffortlesslife.co and my podcast, Systems Made Simple. And I'm there every week sharing just behind the scenes of how you can streamline and structure your business to be able to scale it and spend more time in your zone of genius. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much, Courtney. This has been amazing. It's been amazing to meet face to face and actually have that connection, right? Like to be able to connect and not just see people's names floating around the world. And I know that so many people are going to walk away today, like loving and appreciating so many little amazing nuggets that you left and put into this episode. And I would even recommend if you're considering a podcast, maybe go back and re-listen to this episode because there might be something that you missed, right? like life happens, you're getting kids in and out of the car or making dinner at the same time that there might be some key things that you've missed. So go back and just re-listen to this episode. So thanks so much, Courtney. Thank you for having me. This has been so much fun.